heart disease kills more men and women annually than every cancer combined. Heart disease is the number one killer of men and women in this country and around the world. It kills more men and women annually than every cancer combined. But we don't screen for it. We don't screen for it. And we can have another conversation another day about why that is the case and why we don't have recommended screening. But what this means for you is that none of the testing I'm about to describe for you is likely to be covered by your insurance if you don't have symptoms, okay? If you don't have chest pain, you don't have shortness of breath, you are gonna have to pay out of pocket to get this testing done. And that is not okay with me. I'm not saying that that is appropriate. I wish I could change it. Hey guys, it's Dr. Lily Johnson, vascular surgeon and cardiometabolic health specialist. And I am on a mission to put myself out of business as a surgeon. Today, we are gonna talk about screening and early detection of cardiovascular disease. We're gonna talk about the three main options that exist, why they are so necessary, what they will cost you, and absolutely, please be sure to stick around and learn which one I recommend most often and why. If you were here for the lab videos, in part two, we talked about a bonus test, which was an imaging study of some kind. And I am a firm believer that we should be checking people for the presence of early cardiovascular disease. That means plaque or thickening in the vascular wall. And yet this is done incredibly rarely, and it's almost never covered by insurance. So patients don't have this done unless they're having symptoms like shortness of breath or chest pain. This is a huge, huge missed opportunity, and it is why I will fail on my mission to put myself out of business as a surgeon. This disease, cardiovascular disease, the accumulation of plaque in the arteries, whether that's the heart arteries, the neck arteries, the leg arteries, this whole process takes decades. We have a year's long runway to detect this disease, make changes, and head off the complications like heart attack, stroke, and limb loss before it ever gets that bad. But that's not how our modern system works. Our modern system says, well, we can treat your risk factors and then guess about whether you have disease or not. We'll put it all in a calculator and see how it goes. And then we wait. We just wait for stage four disease, right? This is like metastatic cancer. By the time you've had a heart attack, by the time you've had a stroke, by the time you have a black toe, this is stage four disease. And yet this is where most of the time I get involved as a surgeon. Why on earth would we not detect this disease early and stop it. That's what we're gonna talk about today. So the first of these tools that is probably the most widely available and the most widely discussed is the coronary calcium score, also known as CAC or CAC. This is a CT scan based technique that does not involve any contrast. It's a very quick CT scan. At most places, the amount of radiation is actually about the same as the level of a mammogram. So the radiation load is not terribly high and it detects calcium. So x-rays don't penetrate bone very well. And so calcium is again, what's in bone. And so the calcium in old plaque shows up on these non-contrasted CT scans. We can then add up all the little bits of calcium and generate what is called the calcium score. This is typically in Agatston units and it ranges anywhere from zero to into the thousands. And the important thing to know about coronary calcium is that it represents a pretty late marker of the atherosclerotic process. We start with fatty streaks in the artery wall. Those get larger and soft plaque. And then over time, the body will try to heal or seal this over with calcium. And you can think of it like paving over a gnarly pothole in the street. But the calcium is what the body uses to try to seal over an area that it perceives to be injured in the artery wall where that soft, vulnerable, inflamed plaque is. So if you have a positive calcium score, you absolutely have disease. That is a late sign actually of disease. And we assume that the calcium probably represents 
20 to 30 percent of the total plaque that you might have in the artery at any given time. So it's sort of like just seeing the tip of that iceberg of the total plaque burden that you might have. This also increases significantly over time. As I mentioned, this disease process takes decades. So if you're 40 and your calcium score is zero, I'm not impressed. That doesn't mean much to me because generally speaking, people in their 40s are going to be developing more of the, of the soft inflammatory plaque. It hasn't really calcified yet. If you're 70 or 80 and your calcium is score and score is zero, that's much more helpful. That means a lot more to me. That actually probably signi signifies pristine, very healthy arteries. But at 40, it's a way different number. And a lot of people make the mistake of saying, well, my calcium score is zero, I'm fine. We know that that's not true. It means your 10 year risk is low, but it's not zero. And it doesn't mean that you can continue to ignore risk factors in your biomarkers or in your lifestyle that might be contributing to inflammation and the development of plaque moving forward. That said, calcium scores are the most widely available of the three tools we're gonna talk about. And they are the cheapest, frankly. So if that is all that is available to you, if that is what you can start with, by all means, please start with a calcium score. We'll go from there. If it's positive, it definitely answers the question. If it's negative and you're young, we need to talk about whether that really represents an appropriate screening modality for you. If you're young and high risk, a calcium score of zero is not as reassuring as it ought to be. And we would want to think about another modality that would allow us to image soft plaque. So. CAC, again, is the most accessible price-wise. It will run you somewhere between $50 and $300. Most places, depends on your market. And in many states, you can order this yourself or you can walk in and do this yourself. You do not need a physician's order to do it in many places. Some places you will. Don't come at me. It's a thing. The next one that I like to talk about is CIMT, carotid intimal medial thickness. Now, this is my favorite test. Um, it is also not generally recommended by the American Heart Association or other major bodies. And that's because it has a little bit of a storied history where it was considered unreliable. That is a solvable problem. And in my practice, I use the highest quality lab that is available in the United States. They are called CardioRisk. And the CEO there has made it his mission to make CIMT the most reliable, repeatable test available. We can talk more some other time about why CIMT is absolutely my favorite imaging test, but suffice it to say, it is an ultrasound based technology. So that means there's no radiation and it can be done in the office. You don't have to go to a special imaging center and it looks at the thickness of the lining of our blood vessels. So many people have had an ultrasound of the arteries in the neck called a carotid duplex generally that is only looking for really severe plaque and narrowing of the vessel. This is a much more sensitive test, what we're talking about, the CIMT, because we are looking at hundredths of a millimeter of change in that thickness. We are also looking for the presence of any plaque. And because it's ultrasound, we can tell, is it soft, vulnerable, inflamed plaque, or is it calcified plaque? Has it been there for a while? And if it's there, is it narrowing the lumen or the flow channel for blood? All of these things are very helpful information and they work really well even in young patients because we have image data for people even in their toddler years, right? People have been taking ultrasound to the neck of patients with familial hypercholesterolemia or other very high risk conditions and normal kids, right? We have the population norms going all the way down to childhood. So if you are young and you are high risk or you are worried, a CIMT is a great test for you to understand where you are on that risk spectrum because we'll be able to tell whether your arteries are thicker or thinner or average for your age. So this is a great test. The other reason I love it is that it allows us to monitor how we are doing over time. Calcium scoring is really tricky because calcium can increase over time, even when we are stabilizing plaque and making it less susceptible to rupture. So a calcium score can go up when we're doing well. Calcium scores can also go up with uncontrolled, unmitigated disease. So if your calcium score goes up, is that good? Is that bad? 
We don't really know. So nobody recommends following your calcium score over time to monitor the effectiveness of your treatment therapies. But CIMT is a great tool. Even if you have plaque, the IMT or that thickness of the vessel lining does change and can reverse. So even if your plaque doesn't go away, if your IMT thins or gets closer to your normal eight arterial age, then we know we are doing well at reducing risk and we believe that that plaque is stabilizing. So for people with a lot of calcium, we think a CIMT is a really great test for monitoring effectiveness of treatment over time. Uh, it really matters how you do this. I really recommend trying to find a cardio risk provider to do a CIMT for you. You can go to the cardio risk website, look up where you can get one done near you and find that information. That will generally cost somewhere between $150 and $500, again, depending on your market and who's doing it. Uh, it all right, let's talk about the third one, CCTA or coronary CT angiography. This is now the gold standard, I would say, of preventative cardiovascular testing. This is another CT scan like CAC, but it adds the presence of dye. And the CT machine is actually calibrated to your heartbeat. So we get very precise, beautiful images of the you know, two to three millimeter coronary arteries that supply the heart muscle. And we can look to see, is there calcified plaque? Is there non-calcified plaque? Is there narrowing? How much narrowing? Is it narrowed enough that it impacts the physiology or the pumping function of your heart? We can actually tell all of that with CCTA or coronary CT angiography. Beyond the regular CT scan, we now have at least two companies. One is called Clearly, the other is called HeartFlow that are offering an AI-based image analysis of this plaque. So it will calculate your total plaque volume. It will say how much is calcified, how much is soft, how much is the very soft, very vulnerable plaque that might rupture. How much is the stenosis causing impairment of blood flow to your heart or something called FFR, fractional flow reserve. These are really remarkable evolutions in our technology and they provide a huge amount of information. So you'd say, well, just sure, let's, let's everybody get one. So yeah, the downside is that they are still pretty pricey. Um, if you have any symptoms, I would say this is the test for you, right? And if you were saying, gosh, sometimes I get tightness in my chest when I exercise, or I get really short of breath and I don't think that's normal. I would push you towards a CCTA as your next test of choice, because if you're having symptoms, we can absolutely tell which artery might be the culprit, how narrowed is it? It gives us all of that information. That said, if you are just the average, very conscientious health citizen looking for an analysis of your risk, you're not having any symptoms, it's kind of a, it's kind of a big lift. It's, it's expensive, it will not be covered by insurance without symptoms. The AI overlay is yet another expense and it's more radiation. And the contrast dye occasionally causes some people trouble, especially if you have kidney issues. So CCTA is a really great test, in, in very high risk patients and symptomatic patients, it is my test of choice, but I don't recommend it for everybody. I think for the general prevention screening population, a CIMT or a CAC as your initial step is actually a better tool, but CAC is a good test. CCTA is even better. And as prices come down, as radiation comes down, I think going forward, if I had to guess, look into the future, that's probably where we are heading in terms of you know, broadening exposure for screening for cardiovascular disease. Um, I think that it's overall just easier technically than the CIMT test. It's more widely available uh, through the CT protocol. So ultimately, if I had to make a prediction, that's where we'll go. But for now, it's still pretty pricey and um, not as accessible as CAC or CIMT. CCTA, that CT angiogram of the coronary arteries, typically runs between $800 and $1,500 out of pocket. The AI overlays will be probably another six to $1,000, depending on what you're getting tested. So that by far is the most costly. But we're not talking about necessarily doing all of these every year. I do typically offer CIMTs annually, but 
that's neither here nor there. Uh, I think overall pricing is, is challenging for folks. I'm not going to pretend that that's not an issue. I wish it were covered by your insurance, but generally it's not unless you're having symptoms. And unfortunately it's, it's up on us to get this done and take that, take that burden on ourselves. But you wouldn't be here if you weren't interested in knowing what your risk is. And that is where we are with that kind of coverage. Let's step back a second because I think it's important to know what is currently done. You know, it's not as though everybody is ignoring the risk for cardiovascular disease. There are lots of ways that we try to estimate people's risk. The most common way is to use a risk score or a risk calculator, okay? And this takes into account major risk factors that we have talked about before on this channel, right? We know that your blood pressure is relevant, your age is relevant, the diagnosis of diabetes, whether you were ever a smoker, and yes, your lipid numbers. All of these get crunched into a big equation and it spits out a number. That number tends to be a 10-year risk number, which if you're pretty young doesn't mean a whole lot because risk for young people is always low. That's because age is a risk factor. So the older you are, the higher that number will be just by age alone. And also it's not very helpful because you don't necessarily need to know about whether you'll have an event before you're 50, but you'd really like to know, will you have one when you're 80? Will you have one when you're 90, right? I see people living into their eighties and nineties who still have heart attack, stroke and limb loss. And it's not any better when you're 80 or 90 than it is at 60 or 70. So let's think about understanding our risk early so that we can treat that risk and we can manage that risk going forward. So the current way is you get some number and it says you have a 5% risk of having an event in the next 10 years. Maybe you get a lifetime risk as well. So your lifetime risk is 38%. Well, okay, but there are a lot of people who have low risk who still have events. And there are some people who have high risk who never have events. These are all probabilities. They speak to population level risk. So when we do these massive studies, like the Framingham study, we're looking at populations. We say, what are the things at the population level that correlate with, develop with the development of atherosclerosis or cardiovascular disease, blood pressure, lipids, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes, tobacco use, right? All these things at a population level reflect risk for disease, but they don't tell you if you have disease, like what is going on in your arteries today? None of this speaks to that. So what is the solution to this problem? The solution is to quit guessing and start looking. We just have to look with our eyeballs because we now have great tools that are available to us to go do this. All right, let's recap. We covered why I'm going to fail in my mission to put myself out of surgery unless we can come up with a way to get everybody screened early for cardiovascular disease. Because right now we do not screen for the number one killer of men and women around the world. It's bananas. We screen for breast cancer and colon cancer and prostate cancer and cervical cancer. We do not screen for the one disease that kills more people than all of those combined. It just it blows the mind. But we can do this on our own. And unfortunately, right now, that is where we are. If you want this information, you are going to have to go out and do it. And you're going to have to either get your doctor to help you do it or go do it yourself. We will put some resources in the description below of how to get this testing done, how to look up where it might be available near you. So all that to say, we need to stop guessing. The risk calculators are okay, but they're population risk. They're not your risk. So if you want to know your risk, you need to go take a look at your blood vessels or get somebody else to do it for you. So look it up, get that testing done. Hit me up in the comments if you have questions about how to get this done. And I look forward to chatting with you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Take good care.